Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of Tea Time Roundup where you are updated on the biggest entertainment stories around you. This week has been just full on, mixed feelings I must say, but stay tuned to find out all the mixed feelings just of what aspire this week as your fave, if I or my, will put you through the roller coaster. This is one story that shook the entire internet. It is not uncommon for the Smiths to be in the news for something relating to open relationships. However, this is the first time it had properly been addressed. Jada Pinkett Smith has admitted that she had an entanglement with August Alsina. While she and her husband were very much, in her words, amicably separated. So honestly, for me, I don't understand the force, but maybe that's just me. Like I mentioned, this week is mixed, so moving from one messy triangle to something truly and really heartbreaking for the friends, families, and fan of Naya Rivera, AKA Savannah from Glee, as her body was found from the lake that she was last seen. This is the third death from the Glee series cast. And honestly, guys, my heart just can't take it anymore. Rest in peace, my beautiful and feisty Naya. On something completely different, we have Idris Elba, AKA your girlfriends, MCM and Mr. Chocolate, has taken quite a different route in opinions on regulating bodies, censoring or taking down racist content on TV. My co-anchor seem to be okay with this, but the thing is, yeah, is the narrative is not in the favor of the rate is not in the favor of the racist and is teaching something substantially positive, then I'm all for it. If not, I think that the world would do just fine without them. Please take a look for yourself. You and I decided we were gonna take our space and what happened. Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes, it was a yeah. relationship. Absolutely. Wow. I felt Most like it was to important to come to the table. Uh, is that, that's not a thing. Like, <laughs> is that thing now? Oh, it's a thing. I it like is what so Tory Lanez, I like what Tory Lanez put out there. I don't what know if you guys saw Tory Lanez's mm. tweet. Tory Lanez was like, I just want all my exes to know that you were never a real relationship. We're just an entanglement. Mm. And I think, okay, that's beginning mm. to work. We can do the entanglement thing. <laughs> it's basically thing. a complicated mm. relationship. Yes, that's that's basically. Yeah. Something that's not very straightforward. Yeah. Okay. I think for... But, but like someone said in this building, like when he comes comes to ladies we always find a word for it but when it comes to a man we would make sure let's be real it, let's be it, real it, let's it, actually it have Facebook. this conversation this. If, uh, honestly speaking don't think use your head let me not say what mm. I want you to think <laughs> I no, yes <laughs> okay <laughs> honest conversation mm. this is genuinely not the same as as the conversation that happens when men cheat mm -hmm. why not 90 percent of the time when somebody comes out to say that the man was cheating it was private they were not separated mm -hmm. it wasn't amicable mm -hmm. the, it was it, even the relationship they was a, a secret no but it's not a defense, defense. Said i said use, use your, your head. Head. Just honest conversation is have you ever seen a situation give me one situation that's like that. that. Do you know why That's this is guy. like this? Because we have the cameras, because we have the red table talk. Because no, she interferes, we don't. Because Before Before she interferes in a lot of other people's business. What? So she's trying to put out, okay, That's my business point. is out there now. I need to address it. I no, but it's the, the same thing way. that August said, the best though. way to address it. Yes, I was in an entanglement. Okay, for oh, me, Lord. after watching this um, thing, I mean, the first thing that was ringing in my head is what my mom would always say. And she would say, don't ever interfere in a man and a woman issue. <laughs> True. Because when they would say, they will use it to settle. So mm. when it comes to relationship, whether married or just a relationship that they're hoping to get married or they're just happy being entangled, I don't interfere. That's one. And secondly, I kind of like where they are. I love how open they are. And there's something um, um, Will said, and he said, it's, um, this is me paraphrasing now, it's interesting to know that you have someone who would still remain your family regardless of the mistakes you've made. And mm. they agreed that it took them a long time to get to where they are mm. now. And they had to go through fire and a lot of things mm. to get to this point where it's a case of do or die. Like, mm. remember August also said they've moved from being married couples to life partners. Mm. So it's a case of regardless of what Will does, I am here. Mm. Regardless of what um, Jada does, we are does in this Does that necessarily together. guarantee happiness? And I think happiness. that's amazing. I think that guarantees it, it, happiness it does because she said something it that they it never helps. keep a secret. Mm. So if you're with somebody that 
that is that open and you know it whatever you, yeah. do, you know there's some truth that really you. hurts that's like amazing. you would forgive it but you may never forget it and it Who begins to you affect won't be hurt other things by some, yeah. something else or anything i think it's in the video no but i'm just saying that okay other. it's okay to know the truth but it hurts so bad that i may never like every time i see you walk in a it, type it, of it, way that's why you need healing just, like she says you need healing uh, this conversation huh. for me was really awesome i think it's manipulative if you ask uh, me. Mm, mm. i also see people turning to marriage cancel on top of this their matter creating a post long thread and telling you this is how it's done the truth is you don't know what happened before that shoot and what will happen after the shoot mm. the only thing we know is that they have decided they are going to be together mm. through thick and thin whether you put think is right or you think is wrong it's not your business yeah. it is their marriage and they are happy doing what they are yeah. doing bad marriage for life yeah bad marriage so, I mean, for life i love that so yeah you cannot <laughs> no bad marriage use them for life please lovely that's, marriage. Been, oh, that's, that's what they're that's doing what, i'm just saying like for me it's never okay. gonna work let's just let's just okay. claim the positivity but if you are in a relationship I feel like the way people respond, no, no shade to anyone, is that usually when the person has either been through a relationship or is like, it is mm. like has been through a lot with somebody, you can tell that this type of relationship is the ideal, it's the realistic. There's no mushy because mushy, lovey all. lovey. Like it is hardcore pain for the most part. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Mm. That's well, what that I, looks like. Social media, oh, okay. we need to move in. Social media has been thrown into a frenzy. I saw a conversation between August, it was made up though, between yeah, August and Will Smith, and it was with R. Kelly's song, Same Girl. And, and then, can, can I just put into, the, before we go on the break, mm -hmm. that, um, what's it called? August is actually a kiss and tell, and not, a, not the innocent person here, because they did the exact same thing with Kiki Palmer on, on Twitter, basically saying, eh, but you wanted me, not you. And I was just thinking, okay, wow, bro. And everybody came for him. No, Kiki basically was the first saying, to start. No, she didn't mention his name. He caught his shade and went harm. No, but he caught so his shade. No but, no, but then, why do we know that's not the same thing that's happening here? That it wasn't just honesty because I was really thinking it was the victim here. But if you're going no, to be kissing and be telling victim. when remember, you are remember hurt, Jada said then and they Jada were is in older. that entanglement because they were at a point that Jada and Wilna were at a point where they thought they were never coming back together. Mm. So if you are entangled with someone in a in that kind of relationship and you actually thought, okay, this is now me. I and thought this that's person. what she messed up. Though. Helping a boy that's back sick, to that person, and then you start. Yeah, that's the only thing. was the healing process. I guess it's now safe to say rest in peace. Yeah. But um, there is a hey, word he keeps using that I don't understand, which is I'm confident mm. that it's her body. Is it that the family members have not confirmed that that is her body? Mm. Or I don't know, but it's still sad regardless. I think the, 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 it's still a bit confusing. It's a huge yeah. question mark. If she wasn't committing suicide, did an animal drag her from the bottom? Because she clearly knows how to swim. Mm. So... Uh, what happened if you were not trying to kill yourself? Was it an accident? Did you? Can you slip in water? Like you know, I'm not. I don't, I don't know how to swim. So could, I don't know it anything could have about. Been the boat capsized because, um, according to the boy, when he looked back, he saw mom disappear. According to the statement that he read, and she couldn't he saw swim. Mom disappeared. They saw a they, He was um, wearing a life vest and um, wrapped. No, he with wasn't a, wearing a life vest. But he was wrapped with a towel. Yeah. I mean, so that's you took time to be careful. And they saw an adult-sized. Um, live vest in the boat as well so meaning something happened it must have been an accident and she tried to save her son first, first. and she couldn't save herself from the picture that mm. was painted and um, i think it's just the language the language that is safe to use until you are com until the corona confirms that okay this is the body of this person mm. right they cannot just say this is not but they are confident they've given all the evidence is based on the things they saw on her. They believe it's she still a weird language to use, except I mean, maybe if you're in water for a while. It's just, it's just, it's de just de like does when your body you say, deform when, when that you happens? know somebody, a murderer killed somebody, and you're saying Alleged. allegedly, yeah, even killed. though when you know, even that. though you know this is the murderer, it's that's just a term, that's it's not different, it's, it's just body. the same thing. It's either her body or it's not her body. It's not like we're going to until, prove or go to court to say, anyway, let's not argue until a death certificate is even is granted, they would still be saying. Yeah, confidence. It's confident, yes. It's a weird language. <laughs> no, no, that, I've never heard that before. It's weird so, for nah. you to call a rapist Any. allegedly a rapist. It's weird, even though you know. If that's too deep, those are two different well, things. Well, I'm talking about whether the language of the law. The persons, I, I guess so. I mean, if, you, if you're looking for a body, would you, uh, honestly, do you hear people say, oh, yeah, we found the body, but we're, we're not confident that it's not the body? Uh, no, like, have you ever heard that? I've what? never, because I've never heard them say they're not confident about a body that had been discovered. So when you now say that they are confident about a body, it's if like, a body is burnt and they were looking for somebody, that's what I was they, asking. Does was no water deform your face? Of like, if it it, maybe, maybe her face was. It's weird. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, let's start. So with... this is kind of blonde, chestnut. but not complete chestnut. Mm. Okay, like Morris chestnut. All right, babes. <laughs> <laughs> So Idris Elba is against censoring racist content on television. He called on TV networks to avoid censoring shows with racist content and instead introduced a rating system to educate viewers on outdated practices. In his opinion, we are storytellers and should be allowed to say what we want to say. Um, I agree. I mean, it's not just about this one. I mean, he said it's good to have the disclaimer from the beginning mm. to say maybe you're saying this is an outdated opinion mm. or you're saying this is, you're just showing what used to happen mm. in the past or something. At least to make it clear to people that this is, I think I have the same problem when it comes to um, when they censor God on television. And I'm wondering why are you doing that? So if we cannot have that conversation regarding religion and how they censor it, I don't think this anybody will listen God? to. Uh, mm. At least I see it on African magic. You have to thank God in some instances. That's very strange. Mm -hmm. Very. Yeah. Uh, I disagree with But that's for safety of religion because we have safety Muslims. Safety of religion. Yeah, we have Muslims, we have Christians. Not but isn't it God for all of them? Just to make it not. <laughs> if it was Jesus, I would right. understand. But God, isn't it God for all of them? I think God is, I think it's Jesus the censor. They censor God. God. I think it's Jesus. That's, I'm telling you, they censor God. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's very weird. Um, I don't agree to this. I, I don't think we have a right to say whatever we want to say. I don't think so. I don't want a world like that where everybody feels like they have a right to say whatever they want to say because they're sick people and there's thoughts that don't need to be publicized and promoted and whatnot. And to assume that the viewers will have enough discretion because you have put a tiny thing in front of it... Um, is enough reason? I don't think so. They still say, don't try this at home. I'm kids, you try it at home. They still say, this is fictional, whatever, whatever. When, they, you, when you start porn, I'm meant to try to try that thing when they get home. <laughs> I don't because want... Because are liable to die why young. Yeah, to go to because are liable to die young. But People why, are still... Don't I don't want... Allowing this freedom would help us tell the stories? Because, I mean, there, I, I think I said it on this table when I said, um, I think it's American Son now. That after watching that movie, Did you guys enjoy that movie. I haven't it's, seen it. It's educative. It is, but it's kind of a drag. I haven't finished it. You have to be into it to understand what they are trying to depict. Okay. So basically, it helped me understand what it. I, I, I'm, maybe it's not just American Son now. There's another one that came out in the cinema last year. Um, that was about um, a, a white man who killed a white lady, but it was being pinned on a dark guy. Mm. I can't remember the name of that movie now. But movies like that actually help me understand Crazy. the struggle of these people. But that's not what I, he's talking <clears throat> about. He's talking about movies that they're taking... That right now, it's a conversation that they're taking down movies that have been racist inclined. Not that they've been t intentional about sharing our story or like looking at the past. They're not talking about that. They're talking about getting a, a white person to be painted black and have red lips and mock black people. They're talking about like stuffing women's. But I don't know if you've seen. He's also the, talking about he, the picture. He's also racism talking about depicting history no, and racism. No, in a because movie. The, in the, in the, if you look at the full story, the conversation was about the movies that are being they taken are down the, now. Do you know the amount the of black people black who black made those shorts. movies? The people who made. Do, have you watched Black? Yeah. Uh, Do you know the amount of? In fact, there were calls to take back um, Blackish the down people, from the. I agree to Blackish. And, and the thing is, the, the people who made I don't those like that. movies Six, are the Six ones form. taking it down themselves. Yes. Yeah, so it's not like there's a body saying, no, you must take down this movie. Yes, of was, course, yeah, of course. Content. Because what the examples that he was even giving is not about that. It's not long work to freedom and... It's not that type of movie that's but, depicting history. But, it is mocking another okay, the race. Ones that are mocking. Yeah, the, the ones that stereotype. Said said you have you know to know what? the truth to be able to mock Thank the you truth. Very much. Mm. So let me, let me explain something. I think... I got the same vibe as LC on this one that um, it's the type of thing that it keeps our history in check. Like, it's like saying, don't teach history in schools anymore because they're outdated. So I think the new, the new generation needs to know this thing, that there was once a time when we have a perfect world, there's no okay. racism. The, and maybe and they should now try to find a way to yeah. tell to the pitch story in. I, they're, not they're not saying that these movies will not be in, um, accessible anymore. It's just going to be harder to access. So we don't taking want away from Netflix. Access. We want Why the newer not? generation Why do you want to be the able new generation to see that, to see that, that there was racism. That there was, you think, you think that they're not going to see that? 
You really think well, that they're going? What, they're not going to know, see it. The problem is, is we keep fighting. We keep fighting. They will not see racism in this in this in their in their experience. They will not see something. They will not see where it started from. But you can find that. But you know what? Okay. We keep fighting for something, but it's more like we don't believe in what we fight for. When we fight for racism to be eradicated, freedom for all, all lives matter, black lives matter, and then you'll be like, oh, you think it would ever go away? Like, that is just very contradictory because oh. if I'm fighting okay, for something, expect, I should uh, believe in it. I expect that we are going to dwell on this topic okay. this long. Well, I guess it's as, it's as sensitive as it gets, but um, I think they, they can find a middle ground, like we mentioned in mm. our previous episode when we were talking about um, the relationship thing. There has to be a middle ground mm. that allows for stories Retelling to be free that does not promote um, racism and also ensures that people have something that connects them to their history. Mm. I think so. I think. Welcome back. Nick Cannon gets fired from Viacom CBS because he cited anti Semitic podcast remarks. Even if you are black, there just isn't any space whatsoever for racism in the world. We are trying to create, baby. So, but I'm sure he had learned from this and didn't mean any harm. My co is way all over the place on this story. So, take a look for that. Pata Ranking has been in the news lately, and don't worry, it is for something very positive. He has just awarded full scholarships to 10 African kids, and I am absolutely for it you need to start tagging your faves also get on board and make this a trend because like i said i'm really up for this i've noticed this this um insensitivity towards the jewish culture and history especially what happened with them and the germans and all the type of stuff I think it's a bit sad. I think it's still a very big deal. And though that they have done better with healing in comparison to the black community, you still can't rubbish the pain. I don't think there's any space for that. And But let's talk about the conversation, which is basically about, at least one of the things I saw that they talked about was that they, they have controlling power in the media and they kind of use that power to direct what the narrative is about mm. and how they handle it and i mean i'm sorry if this will not sit nice with someone but it feels like that is exactly what viacom is doing right now actually with the fact that this seems like is from his statements that he shared on facebook it seems like this is a ploy to satisfy the person with the highest sharing or the controlling share in the company and this person is jewish so um, Fox also picked something off what um, he said and they agree that it is wrong and how he said it. And they had a conversation and they say that they understand and he needs to do some learning and he has apologized and agreed that what he said definitely hurt some people and he would do better and learn better about that. So why is it so such a big deal for Viacom to understand and maybe have a conversation with him even at the point of agreeing that he has apologized on social media? I don't want to believe that he will come on social media to apologize. Mm. and not apologize in the boardroom or in the mm. conversation so well, just this is acting you... this is becoming um when you are you, are, you want to kill somebody for pouring away um, um water from a glass cup that's how i feel about mm. this particular one I, I think apology is not enough for <clears throat> something just because you are sorry deeply sorry does not mean that you don't bear the consequences so everybody that has said anything remotely racist or remotely anti-semitism uh, uh, has to lose their job has to lose everything. I think it's based on discretion. For us to understand it. I think it's based on discretion for that person. But to act like being chastised for racism is is an overstretch. Is not. No, does not really sitting well. It's not just about racism right now. It's, it's maybe you need to read the whole back and forth that have happened on this case. If you're quiet, I don't mm. know why. No, no, no. Because I'm just listening on. to you guys. Because mm. I also share the um, train of thoughts that this is um, way beyond what he said. Because of. Basically, what he said can be said to be systematic racism, mm -hmm. which um, a lot of us are guilty of, whether we know it or not. Sometimes systematic racism are just those things that you're just biased, you're just, there's just prejudice over certain people, certain thoughts, certain traditions, certain all of that. So um, it's something that we're all guilty of. So I think it's something that can be forgivable or slightly punished not completely firing the guy, especially like you said, I think they should have had a word with him if he does it again. But I think this is like, he's had, he's had series of cases though, things that he said, not just um, racist comments, like things that he said that 
has caused a lot of um, controversy. Even the monogamy thing is still being dragged to today, and then this comes up and all of that. So it's no, that's been... not the same. No. <laughs> no, it's not the same. I'm saying it's that series of controversies. I'm not relating it to this. I'm saying it's that series and all of this. No, but you, if you are bringing that in, then you are trying to say that they are looking at his history of controversies. Yeah. I, I believe and so. Then, okay. No, I but so because I'm wondering the only reason why you would punish a man for systematic racism so deep, if not because you're putting into consideration all the other things. He Maybe there'll be other like things, but I don't think the monogamy one is, will be part of it. I Maybe. think I think uh, you, not every attraction or noise or backlash is bad for the um, company. for the company, and I don't think that was something that was bad. It wasn't <clears> offensive. <throat> People have a disagreement to his taste, but it's not an offensive or a derogatory statement. Um, he didn't rubbish the female gender or anything like that. I don't really listen to Nick, so I don't know if there's anything else. I haven't really heard anything else. Um, but maybe, maybe there's more things, but I'm, I'm still, I don't, I, I, I don't know how I can feel comfortable saying that he didn't deserve to be fired when if this was, t if the tables were turned and it was a white person and they fired them, I would be very satisfied with that. So personally, I don't think I can take that stance as to say that it is a dramatic stand because we do that with a lot of other things when the tables are turned for other races. So... Well, I, 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 I like that you said it's a personal thing. And I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be calling for the firing of a white person because it's a... Pato Rankin recently um, awarded 10 African students full paid scholarships. In a post shared on Instagram, Pato Rankin said the 10 exceptional young people were selected after reviewing hundreds of applications. He also revealed he's currently taking care of 150 kids in his hometown. Mm. Now, say kudos to Pato Rankin. Mm. It's a good way to be in the news. I mean, um, the scholarship, of course, warmed my heart. And I think the response about um, 150 kids being taken care of has to be definitely Nigerians and their backlash for saying, what have you done for the people, your own hometown and where you came from? And he had to respond to that. Mm. So congratulations to the 10 um, students um, going to get this opportunity. And I hope that they make him proud, make the organization proud, or make mm. the NGO proud. Yeah. Mm. This is a big deal. I, I barely, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen this in the music space in Nigeria. I've seen people in the music this. space do a lot of like philanthropy work, but mm. to invest so much in education, it's almost like an oxymoron because usually people leave music, um, education for music. Mm. And it, it's, it's not common to see those two things thrive together. Like somebody who is actively in music also actively striving for education. It's very rare. So I'm, I'm, I was really taken aback that that was his interest to be able to do this and go all out on you know leadership and an academy and things like that for children like it's so it's amazing it's a big deal <laughs> and he needs like recognition for that I, I, like i wouldn't mind these clouds to go on and on and on like this should be something that is contagious i've always preached about like having sustainable um giving and this is one of them i don't think in africa there is a better gift to give someone in our society than education because mm -hmm. money will finish um but I like that he's doing that, and even the way he picked them was so. Just every, see, I could gush on and on and on. It, mm. it was Let's amazing. Let's turn down the gush. Yeah. Okay. I like, I like this too, and what really caught my interest was that somebody who is actually actively involved in music is still so interested in education. But I now figured that okay, at the end of the day, when you become successful as whatever it is you you do and you had dreams of doing certain things like um it's okay to live vicariously through other people and i believe um this is like one of those things in as much as it is um, a philanthropical thing to do for people it is also something that you need to know that okay if you have a dream that you can and you see other people who share the dream a dream you had there's nothing wrong with helping them achieve it even despite the fact that you personally couldn't achieve those mm -hmm. dreams because i think that that makes a lot of sense and this is um a new groundbreaking achievement that yeah. a lot of artists should um look into and begin to track the spot. I love the vibe I get from it. I feel like it has a system around it. And the other person I have seen, maybe there are others I haven't noticed in the industry, so please don't come for me. But the other person I'm going to know, I, I've, I've noticed doing something like this that is well-structured, even if it's not um, solely education, is mm. Mr. Easy. Mm. Because he has um, an organization mm. and uh, what he's doing with Empower, and he's doing a lot with that as well. Mm. So I'm hoping that we'll see more organized um, mm. giving, giving that... What, 
what is it you call it now? Doing that is sustainable that would help people grow mm. and become someone who can also mm. give in return. And that way we are creating an ecosystem that would actually yeah. change Africa for the yeah. better. So yes, kudos to him and um, we want more of this. I am sure you enjoyed the roundup because I sure did, but it is a wrap for today's episode. If you did enjoy these topics as much as I did, you can catch us on all our episodes of Tea Time on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also, catch the Tea Time crew live on Monday to Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. on DSTV channel 408 across Africa. Once again, my name is Ifo Mai. Adios. <laughs>